Hey guys, it's Paradiddle Luke here. Um, going to do something a little different today. Going to do a tutorial slash how to. It's going to be on processing skin um, for headshots, you know, half length shots, stuff like that. Um, so I use Lightroom 3 by Adobe and Photoshop for all of my processing. Um, Lightroom 3 is a great, great, great program to use. Um, you can do anything with exposure that you want, and if you have a raw file, then it's absolutely perfect to work with. I love it. Best 80 bucks I spent because student discounts. Um, so yeah, we're going to work on this image. Uh, my friend who is the model was very gracious and is letting me show you all how we process her skin. Um, so first off, choose the picture, obviously. Make sure it's uh, really sharp. Um, as you can see, this one's quite sharp. You can see all the detail on the skin, everything that you'd need. Um, do white balance stuff, anything that you'd need to do, that you'd want to do. Um, before you go into Photoshop, you can fix it once you're in Photoshop, um, but it's best to just get it done before. Um, so once you've got all that done with your exposure settings, etc. Again, this is just general stuff. You can do the rest after you've processed the actual image. Just make sure that it's warm enough, sharp enough. Um, you're not oversaturating anything, etc. Um, once you do that, just export it. And then we're going to go into Photoshop. I use CS5. Um, you want to export as a TIFF file. Um, I guess you could do original or PSD. Um, I just do TIFF usually. Um, so let's see while we open this. So yeah, I use CS5. Um, don't actually have any experience with any of the others because I got the student discount on CS5 and so I actually bought it and just have had no reason to use CS4. Um, I've used CS3 on the downstairs computer that my university has. Didn't really do anything important on it though, so I don't really know, can't really help you there. Um, now for the actual processing, First off, make two copies of the image, so you can do that by hitting Command-J twice. Now you're going to name one the tones, that's going to be the middle one and the top one, texture. Now I use a combination of two people's tutorials who I will link for their tutorials to in my YouTube video. Um, one is Cameron Rad, um, who all the steps that I'm doing right now is from him. So then we're going to go to blur on the tones layer with the texture layer off. Click Gaussian, Gaussian blur. And you just want it so that the tones are even. You don't want it too blurry. You don't want it too sharp. Um, this is going to even out the tones and let you process just the tones. So don't do too much. Don't do too little. I can't give you a value because it really depends how many megapixels you have as well as the framing of the image. Um, if I'm doing this on a full body shot, I might be at you know four pixel radius. Now I'm at 9.3 or 10 or so. So it really depends on the picture. So I cannot give you a specific value there. Um, on my 15 megapixels with a just headshot, around 10. Then we go to the texture layer. Click image, apply image. Now if you're working with raw, it should be set up just fine. Go down to uh, blending mode, subtract layer, go to tones, and you're going to see kind of like a ghosty, just texture, gray, gray and white and black, and a little tiny, tiny bit of color on that. You want the opacity is at 100. Scale should be at 2, offset 128. This should all be there already, pretty much. Um, I think the only difference if you're not working on a raw file is you have to click invert. I'm pretty sure that's it. So if you're doing a raw file or a .tif file, um, you're good with the invert off. This is how it's supposed to look. Um, then you go to your blending mode, go down to linear light. Now you're ready to start working, but we're not going to do that yet because we are going to start making our dodge and burn layers. So, first off, make a folder. I like to title it edited just so that I can flip between them very easily. And we're going to make another folder inside that that we're going to call dodge and burn, you know, pretty standard. Um, and then in that, you're going to make two adjustment layers. So you're going to do, they're both going to be curves. 
um, you can either select, go to a shadowy area and pull down. So this is going to be your burning. And then by hitting control, and never mind, not control, by hitting option and the add mask button, you're going to clear it and then rasterize vector mask. For some reason, mine makes me do that. Others, it'll just go to black. Just make sure it's all black, so you're going to be painting that in. Um, so now we're going to make another curve layer. Again, find a highlighted area and pull up just slightly. You don't want too much, but you don't want too little. Again, through just practice, you'll find it. Do the same thing so that you get completely black. So now you're going to be able to paint that in. So now I'm just going to quickly, you know, any major imperfections, though, her skin's actually quite good. I'm just going to use my, what's it called, patch tool, um, just to get rid of any major blemishes, stuff like that, that the industry doesn't like to see, I guess. <laughs> um, chins are always going to be, you know, a work area. Um, the nice part about this is you don't really have to do that much because you can go into your tones layer so just get rid of the bad stuff then you're going to go into the tones layer and you can switch the color if it's red or something to just regular skin color so it's a lot harder to see you don't really notice the imperfections and so you pretty much just do the same thing and just slide it over and then that'll either brighten it up or darken it up depending on the area so you don't really have to do that much again her skin is quite good so we don't have to go into it that much so I think, to be completely honest, that's all I'm going to do on that. There is more stuff that, you know, if I hadn't already processed this a while ago that I would probably hit. Um, but for the most part right now, I'm, I think that looks just fine to me. Um, so now, there are a few methods that some people do that just use Gaussian blur and masks and it looks like crap. Some people just go into Lightroom and work with clarity things and not even use masks and that looks even worse that is like the worst senior portrait look that you could ever get um, don't do that please 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 don't do that um, it just looks like crap <laughs> there's no other way to say it um, so yeah once we finished doing all that you know there are some hairs here that again we could remove for the sake of speed right now I'm gonna just leave them then we're gonna go to the clone stamp you want the opacity under 20. Um, it really doesn't matter where, it just depends how much control you want. Um, I'm choosing 13 here because again she doesn't need that much work at all. Um, with more work you might want to go closer to 20. And you're just going to select an area and just you can't really see it on the video very well but you're just going to pretty much paint on and it's just going to fill some of those shadows and bring some of those highlights down a bit to even out the tones of the skin. This is all in the texture layer, by the way. Um, so that you don't have to destroy all the pixels, you're just kind of merging them together um, to make them look smoother. And the only thing I don't like about this method is uh, depending how many steps you've done, you can't really go back in time with it. Um, it is damaging pixels. Um, but it's really, you know, it's a lot easier to fix or it is a lot easier to not even get to the point where you're damaging it um, with this method compared to others that I've seen at least. Um, so you can also, you know, the hairs you can see are lightening up so they'll be less of a bother and unless the people looking are really experience with Photoshop they won't really notice much of that. So again we're just cleaning up, smoothing out the skin, um, depending the area you are looking at just honestly use your judgment select a brush size that you think will give you enough control and you won't be sitting there all day. Usually on an image that I haven't processed before again this was the clean straight out of camera image that we started with but I have gone through this image before just not this one. Um, so I know what areas to hit and such. Um, but usually I can get an image done in 30 minutes or so, which is pretty good compared to other methods. 
um, especially how much we go in on this. So yeah, so you can kind of see if we toggle the edited on and off. The problem area is obviously that we got rid of with the patch tool. You can see more than the others, but if we zoom in here, you can just see it kind of looks like we put ma more makeup on our face. It just kind of evens out more. Those shadows look a little less deep, etc. Um, so we're just going to fix this up real quick. Again, this method works on worse skin too. She has very easy skin to work with, so that's why this is going so quick. Um, but it does work on worse skin. You just have to spend a little more time and be a little more careful. So, just get rid of some of these small hairs, stuff like that, that you don't necessarily want. Again, this is really controllable other than other methods, so you can really choose everything that you want and keep it in there, which is really nice because we don't want to just get rid of everything that'll look a little bit too processed. So this is a very natural looking method. So that looks pretty good. Again, you got a little blotchy areas just with shadows and stuff. That is all the dodge and burn layers, um, which I forgot to label. So let's go do that. We'll title the shadow one shadows and the highlight one highlights. So let's see. I'm trying to look if there's any areas that I really want to hit. I think we're good here. Maybe go over this real quick. Oop, wrong layer. Again, on the texture layer, otherwise it won't do anything. You can also do it on the tones layer to just even out the tones. It doesn't work quite as well, though, um, so I usually don't end up doing that. So, got the skin smoothed out a bit. Again, natural is what we're going for here. You, Depending how much work you do, if you keep going over this with the uh, clone stamp, you can get it to look more processed, you can get it to look more glamour. Right now I'm just going for the natural look. Um, so looks pretty good. Now we're going to work with the shadows and we're going to use just paintbrush, turn opacity down to anything under 17 or 18. Um, again this just depends how much control you want. And we're painting with white and so we're just going to paint and follow the shadows that are already there. Um, adding shadows can get a little iffy. It can be done, but it can look a little odd. So we're just really beefing up those shadows. And you want your brush pretty soft, so we're a little bit too hard there. So we're going to turn that down. Again, it doesn't really matter. I mean, we, in the last step of this, we will fix that. Um, but it does help if it's a softer brush as long as you have enough control. And again, this is all trial and error stuff, so you need to find what values you like the most. So we're gonna... The purpose of this is to just bring out the curves in the skin more. Um, anything that you want to stand out, etc. So that looks pretty good there. Let's get some on here. Um, cheekbones really, really, really benefit from this. Um, a lot of models don't have very prominent cheekbones. Uh, if they don't, then you can draw them in. <laughs> Again, make sure you're not doing too much, because too much is very easy to see for even non-photographers in Photoshop. So, we're going to turn that off and on. See, that's a big difference. Don't worry, that's not the ending. And if you want to just look, hit Control, not again, sorry, Option. Click on that mask, and you can see where you're painting that. And also, hair really benefits if you give it some time. Go over dark areas with the shadows, light areas with the highlights, obviously, and these will this will make it pop quite a bit. Now, I had a hair light here, so it already is. Whoops. Um, I had a hair light, so it already is. But um, again, even if you don't have one on it, you can make it pop. So yeah, that's about it for the shadows. We'll go over here a little bit. So yeah, and then we're going to back out, take a look at that again. And that's Option or Alt, and then click on the mask. So yeah, it looks kind of funky. Don't worry about it yet. 
and we're going to go to the highlights. And now this is where it gets fun. So now you're just painting along with all the highlights, and we're going to make it really stand out. This adds a lot of contrast to your image, and it will give it more of a glamour look. If you really zap the bags under the eyes with this, you won't even have to use clone stamp or anything like that and make it look like they don't have the right skin, which you'd be surprised how many people do that method. Um, don't do that <laughs> unless it's not possible to get it back. So yeah, now we're just painting on those highlights. Again, these subtle these differences are very, very subtle. We're not going for the overdone look with this and the shadows and stuff. You can do the overdone look very easily. Um, everything's set on a lower op opacity. So if you look, you can keep painting that on like that, depending how much you click. Obviously, we don't want that. So I'm just going to delete that. That was just to show you guys. Okay, and again, the nice part about this is, unlike with other methods that use dodge and burn on a 50% gray layer, um, it's very easy. With the 50% gray, if you make a mistake a while back and you just realize it later, um, then depending how many steps you've done already, you're not going to be able to go back, so you're going to have to go back into that gray. If you have any, any um, curves layers or any color balance layers, you're going to have to re, you know, turn those off, use the dropper to find the exact 50% gray, then paint over it, and then do all these steps, and it's just a pain in the ass. There's no other way to say it. So with this method, you can just click X, which goes to black, or you can just click the eraser, whatever works, um, and just erase. And that's really nice. Um, you know, it's you can make any mistake and go back and just fix it. And that is why I broke away from the Cameron Rad version of this. Um, so we're going to keep doing that. Um, and I'll show you eyes too. The eyes, the method I do with that is Cameron Rad's as well. So he has a very good tutorial. It's just the one dodge burn layer thing that I switched up a bit. So then we're going to go over here. Again, it's very subtle until you finish and then you hit, you know, that on off on your edited folder and you actually see the difference so once you get the method down you will uh, you'll know what to look for in your processing make sure everything you hit is okay so now because we made a dodge and burn layer for that we can turn that off and on and see the differences now obviously that is a drastic difference you can see pretty bad um, edges on all those highlights and shadows and we will get to that in just a second but not quite yet I'm gonna go into the eyes one more time over with the highlights and this also works in surrounding areas too so apparently I'm erasing wow that's embarrassing um, so we're gonna keep going over what I just tried to do that I didn't do because I was erasing my bad um, Again, all subtle, but you'll know what to look for. Go over the hair. Really, really, really benefits from this. Um, it's very hard to mess this dodge burn technique up. Um, again, because everything you can go back if you want to. Um, surroundings and areas around the model will also benefit from the dodging and burning. So don't be afraid to go into every part of the image with that. Um, in fact, if you don't, it might look a little odd. So I tend to hit almost everything in an image with this. So here's our before after of just those shadows dodging and burning. This is probably the biggest step that I do. Um, and now usually you can go back, and if you want, we're going to make a new layer. And this is going to be a classic dodge and burn, so we're going to fill it. See if I remember how to do this. Hold on. New layer. Okay, mode to overlay. Here we go. Sorry, I just zoned out for a second. Uh, and then fill overlay with neutral gray, which is 50%. And then this is a standard dodge and burn. Okay, so D and B, whatever you want to 
label it as, doesn't matter, put it on top. So now this is for any of those areas that are still blotchy that you want to get rid of. Um, then we're just doing the standard dodge and burn. Um, again, I think it's fine to use this sparingly, um, especially like I only use it if there are those splotchy areas. Um, so like here essentially, just to even all that stuff out. Which we might have to go into the tones layer, depending how shadowy it is, and actually drag that to a lighter tone, which will even it out. And again, with more time, we could definitely fix this up more. So now, you've got these weird looking highlight and shadow layers. Now we're going to make them so that they are kind of pleasing to the eye when you look at the actual image. I mean, unless you look closely, you can't really see the edges, but someone that knows post-processing will. So now we're going to do, let's just show the mask, which again is Option or Alt and then clicking on the layer. We're going to go into Filter, Blur, and Gaussian Blur. And again, this is Judgment. Um, this is going to be a little more, especially for headshots. You're going to look at like 30 pixels or so for highlights and around 40 for shadows. And once my computer catches up with that. No, we don't want that much. Sorry again, my computer usually doesn't get slowed down by this much, but we're just going to enter in the value and let it do the work. So we're going to do 30 pixels for this, and again, this depends entirely on the um, the size of the face and the photo, um, because if you're, you have a very small face in the frame, say you're taking a full body shot on location, you can still do this method, but you're going to have to change those values around. So now it's much more smooth. You can see that, I hope, on the camera. And then this is the end of the skin processing. Then for eyes, I usually just, we're going to merge all this together. Actually, we're going to do one step before we do that. Again, this is Cameron Rad's method pretty much. He uses the dodge and burn layer. I'm using the separate highlight shadow layer. And we're just going to go around the iris with the highlight. Brighten that up. And then with the shadows, we're going to go around the very outline. So this is going to be using a really, really, really small brush. And the inside as well. So once you're done with that, we're going to merge everything. Um, I usually save before I do the eyes, um, just because I mean, that's a really easy, easy step, so everything else before that is harder, so save before you do the eyes, if you're saving Photoshop documents or whatever, PSD files. So, now we have that. Again, you can see the before and after of the whole image. And again, it's a very natural look. Um, you can overdo it if you want. I usually don't like to, um, unless that's the kind of look I'm going for specifically. So now for the eyes, we're going to make another layer. We're going to go to Sharpen on your filter, Unsharpen Mask, and we're going to sharpen the crap out of it. So we go to like 108% or so. Um, and then we're going to do Option, hold on the Mask button, or Add Vector Mask, holding Alt on that. And then we're going to use the Paintbrush on white. Again, change your opacity up to 100 now because it's going to be still stuck on whatever value you did for the um, previous steps. And we're just going to go around just the iris. And that's going to sharpen the crap out of the iris. Um, and if that's too much, again, which on this photo, it's a little overdoing it. So then we can just go to opacity. Here, I'm going to zoom in so you can see this. Opacity, and you can just play with it, you know, from nothing to the whole layer added um, until you get to a value that you like. Um, then I usually, for what I do for watermarks, is I use, um, let's see, forget the font that I use. Okay, I use Orator Standard. 
um, depending the picture size and the size that I want my um, watermark, you know, you can play with the font size. Then I'll choose a color that's present in the image, and then I'll just put it somewhere that's not too obtrusive, but also will not be easily removed by someone that is trying to steal your image. Um, also, it just, you know, people see a nice image and they see right there who did it, so you don't really have to worry. Um, then you can play with opacity to dim that, and there you go. So that's from this to that in about, who knows, 20 minutes or so. So, hope this wasn't too long for you. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, again, I'll link to both of the tutorials on that I'm combining here and thanks for watching rate comment subscribe hope this helps you guys for skin processing um, also check out my blog and my Flickr thanks